Hello and welcome to this special edition COVID-19 Rogers TV program. My name is Carol Merton and I'm delighted to invite you to listen to two guests today. But before I introduce those guests, I'd like to say a thank you. For those of you who watch the program, you know that I like to say a few words of thank you to the community at the very beginning. So today, um, although in the past I have thanked our medical officer of health, public health unit, frontline workers, delivery truck drivers, farmers, today I want to read a few excerpts um, from a letter to by an author, Allison Wines. This letter was sent to Francesca Dobbin, the executive director, United Way, Bruce Gray, who kindly shared it with me. So I, I just like to read the excerpts and just say a few words at the end before I introduce our guests. There is an invisible group of people who aren't being recognized, who are working intensely to keep the world turning, to make sure that those on the front lines have the support they need, and those at home have something to go back to when we get to the other side of this. Who are you? You're the accountants and bankers, restructuring finances and debt to help small businesses stay afloat. Your trade managers negotiating frantically to get hand sanitizer and face masks into this country. Your consultants supporting clients through massive change, unsure if you're, you'll get paid for the work that you do when it's all over, but doing it anyway because it matters. Your communicators trying to find the words to explain a crisis like this that has never been experienced before by us and never been seen. To your organization, staff, and the community. You are trying to do this while homeschooling your kids with babies that won't stop crying during conference calls while feeling anxious about elderly parents in nursing homes. Maybe no one is putting signs in their window for accountants and administrators, but what you do matters because you are holding a place for the world to return to normal. My words to you are this, you are not invisible. Our message back is this, we want to send you a most heartfelt and sincere thank you for what you are doing. Your contributions are greatly appreciated and thank you. And on that note, I want to thank our two guests who are joining us today as well. So together they are distant, but in the same room, Skyping in. So I have Shannon Reichelt, who is the, now get, tell me if I get this wrong, but you are a social worker. <clears throat> for the Outreach Mental Health Services, Grey Bruce Health Services, and Frances McAvenue, who is a social service worker as well at Grey Bruce Health Services. Did I get that right? Correct. Yep. Yeah, very good. Lovely. So you're here to tell us um, about your services, but especially about an event that's going to happen tomorrow, rain or shine, in the yep. front lawns of Grey Bruce Health Services. And my understanding is that's a coffee house with entertainment but you're doing it differently this year. So thank you both for being on the program and, and would you mind explaining a bit more about yourselves and then fill us in on, on this event. Sure, so thank you, um, Carolyn Rogers TV for having us. Um, I'm Shannon Reinalt, I'm a social worker at the hospital in our outpatient mental health program. Um, I'm also fortunate enough to be a co-chair of our patient and family advisory council for mental health and addictions at the hospital as well. And I'm uh, Francis McAvenue, and uh, I'm a social service worker with the ACT team, which stands for the Assertive Community Treatment Team. Uh, and I've been on a sabbatical for a year, so I've just rejoined and I'm catching up with all the uh, exciting things that are happening in mental health at this difficult time. And uh, yeah, so happy to be here. Excellent. Excellent. So there's going to be a coffee house tomorrow. Why? What, what, what is the event? Now, I understand you do this every year. 
Yeah, so we're actually entering into our seventh year um, for the coffee house, and Francis and I have been a part of it for quite some time. Um, it uh, started in the wee corners of the cafeteria of the Owen Sound Hospital seven years ago. Um, compliments of one of our patient advisors, Melanie Knapp, who I think is well known to the community as well in terms of a patient advocate. Um, so she had the great idea of bringing talent um, during, so it is Mental Health Awareness Week, um, that's a national celebration of mental health and trying to destigmatize mental illness. Um, and so during that week, she, many years ago, um, decided it would be great to showcase and feature talent of um, current and previous consumers of mental health and addiction services. Um, so each year, um, because of the support and talent of the people that have been involved, um, it's grown to the point of, I think it was about four years ago, um, the theme of Mental Health Awareness Week was Get Loud. And Francis is one with very brilliant and creative ideas um, and took that theme and thought, let's actually make this huge. Um, and so we had a, a large tent on the front lawn of the hospital where we've had up to about 200 people come um, to show their support and watch the performers of um, various opportunities, so spoken word poetry, acoustic guitar, singing, karaoke, um, testimonials, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd like to add to that is that um, what was really exciting about it, about having this big tent out front, uh, culturally speaking, unfortunately, sometimes mental health takes a bit of a back seat. In fact, it's something people don't always talk about readily. They, they uh, isolate and, and some, somehow, for some reason, we've messaged as a culture that this is something to be ashamed of. So I think symbolically the fact that mental health was this massive tent that you could not avoid when you came to the hospital to see that not only was it at the very front door, but people were behind microphones singing about it in the most supportive atmosphere you could imagine. So really, really pleased. I would also add that this year, and we're probably mentioned Melanie Knapp a few times because she certainly uh, been a very important uh, consumer leader in our community. Um, but I, I referenced last year's show, and one thing that uh, when she was interviewed that she had said was, the really neat thing about this coffee house is that now it's happened for seven years, and that so, many, so much so that people are actually expecting it, yeah. and it's something that they look forward to. So, so it, it actually has, has um, left that kind of an impression. So I think uh, the most exciting thing about this year is that um, for the for a while there it wasn't going to happen because of the COVID-19. And I, I know that Shannon, myself, Melanie, and many of the consumers who have been a part of this were so happy that we found some way uh, to do it, even though it being virtually. So you've actually developed your own hashtag trend. Hashtag coffee house. Yeah. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about um, how long, it, you know, when does it start? How long does it run for? Um, and then because we're in COVID-19 world, how it will operate this year, um, maybe just fill in a few more details for those people who will have a chance to see this program a little bit later on today. Absolutely. So, yeah, so in, in previous years, as I've said, we've done it under a tent outside and it's run for, we usually schedule two hours and often it runs over um, just with all the excitement and everything around it. So this year, it, it looked as though we were going to have to cancel it. Um, and I know myself and many other people were, were pretty disappointed. So we were saying, you know, let's get together and figure out how to make this happen. Um, despite COVID and everything else that we faced. And, and being that, in particular, I think this is a really important year to showcase this, <laughs> um, given everything going on around the world. So, um, so yeah, so doing it virtually, uh, we will be doing it at the hospital, but with very much uh, social distancing and uh, sanitation precautions and so on. So we're, we're asking that, yeah, <laughs> we're asking that people do not actually come up to the hospital grounds other than the performers. They will be coming up um, with, you know, different timed uh, performances so that we just have one person in the building at a time along with the people recording. Um, 
And so it will be aired thanks to Rogers TV live on um, Rogers TV Facebook page, um, as well as featured on uh, Rogers TV, Gray and Bruce County, I believe. Um, and we will also have the link on our hospital website as well. So it will be a live event um, with the performers involved. And we ask that audience members and community members um, please sign in either online or watching through the um, cable channels of Rogers TV. Um, so Absolutely. it is tomorrow, uh, Friday, May 8th, and it begins at 1.30. Um, and we will be running about an hour and a half long, so about 1.30 till 3 o'clock. So tell me about the performers, or is that a surprise? <laughs> no, we've been lucky enough to advertise. Um, so uh, we will be having our CEO, Gary Sims, make the introduction um, and the opening. Uh, and then we have a whole variety of talent that will be coming. We have a Poet Laureate, um, Richard Satoski. Um, we, Melanie Knapp will be playing keyboard. Gavin Menzies will be doing a brief stand-up show. Um, Jackie Ralph from the Canadian Mental Health Association will be doing some singing and getting us all excited and riled up, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, we have one of our nurses, uh, Dylan Formage, doing some acoustic guitar. Uh, we have Jason Frank doing some metal uh, um, rock music. Um, and I don't want to forget anyone. We have Mary Sundermeyer, who is also a um, patient advisor for us here at the hospital. And she will be doing um, sort of like a guided relaxation or getting us grounded, um, if you think of us that way. So yeah, it's a wide variety of poetry, stand-up comedy, um, acoustic music, and singing. So people actually ask to perform, or do you, do you invite people, or how does that work? We, we've done that a few different ways. Uh, we've certainly uh, done a call out to ask anybody that would be interested. But even word of mouth, uh, when people have experienced one year, uh, they might be in touch with us to ask if they could do it this year kind of thing. Mm -hmm. one, one thing I wanted to really uh, um, highlight too is I think the appreciation has to go hugely in two places. And one would be certainly the consumers uh, that have put their time, uh, volunteer time behind putting this together uh, many, many hours and to the leadership of our hospital um, because it started, as Shannon mentioned, from having an open ear to what people who had received service from our hospital thought would be helpful to do. So the coffee house is certainly a visible symbol and sign of, of, uh, of an action on the part of our leadership to welcome that and include the voice of, of our patients. But there are many, many other examples of that being the case. So, so I'm proud. Here, I'm wearing... I like to talk a lot, Carol. Sorry. So if I need no, to no, come. this is fast. I'm, you talk. I'm, okay. I'm wearing a uh, Gray Bruce Health Services um, jersey, uh, which is actually this is a. Um, they have some clothing, although I've gained a little. I don't know about you, but COVID nineteen, I've been eating a lot of cake and bread and things like that. So, probably not fitting into it now as I once did before COVID. Anyway, this is this is. Um, uh, for the staff that they can purchase through the foundation, because I think wearing a, a Grey Bruce Health Services uh, emblem is wearing it proud in, in, in these days in particular. So again, I like it, the, the shout out to go to the consumers who have helped made this happen and be the voice that we've needed and to our leadership for hearing that voice and letting Shannon and, and I and other staff uh, join in, in the excitement and, and everything that's been happening. Well said. I'm wondering about the funding for this then. Is it funded through your organization or um, and, and is it the type of event where people should they wish to donate to help with mental health services? Can they do so? This is your chance to ask from the community. <laughs> well then, yes, yeah, so, and thank you for um, <laughs> for that. So the Community Foundation of Grey Bruce has been a long-standing support for 
the coffee house and they provide a lot of support for our performers. So certainly thank you so much to the Community Foundation of Gray and Bruce. Um, in addition to that, a huge thank you and shout out to the Hospital Foundation, so the uh, Bowen Sound Regional Hospital Foundation for their ongoing support. They have helped us purchase items for the coffee house in previous years. Um, this year in particular, we will be um, uh, um, welcoming donations to what we call the Mental Health PIN Fund, and PIN standing for Patient in Need. So anyone that's interested in being able to provide donations to that, we would greatly welcome it. Um, it goes to various things in terms of um, patients of our mental health and addictions programs. So for example, people that will be leaving our inpatient psychiatric unit um, who may need items purchased to set up a home for themselves, um, We've provided clothing, um, food, accessories, um, self-care products, um, a whole bunch of different things that um, given one circumstance and especially right now with a lot more isolation uh, for people, uh, we, we can provide more, more things to them. So we certainly welcome donations to our mental health and addictions PIN fund through the Owen Sound Regional Hospital Foundation. Okay. Yeah. So it's called a coffee house. Are you serving coffee? <laughs> we will be offering virtual coffee. So <laughs> we will hold up a cup and uh, cheers to, to the yeah. community. Yeah. yeah. So something we've done this week, uh, again, that I'd like to be able to highlight is, if you remember when COVID started, the language that was being used, unfortunately, uh, was not the best messaging because it often said things like social distancing. And we heard that loud and clear, social distancing. And what we really want is physical distancing and we want social connectivity. So um, we've tried our best this past week in particular during COVID-19 uh, to reach out to, for example, all of the group residences we've brought uh, pizza and treats to uh, for who house many of the the people that uh, we've cared for in the hospital before. Um, we're trying to do a bit of a caravan to go around with uh, uh, coffee urns and, and muffins and so forth. Uh, again, at a safe, safe distance, but to make sure that people do not feel disconnected. And um, we know we've, we've had feedback from a couple of our consumers, you know, wondering if we're really out there. And, and of course we are out there, we're doing our best. But even though that's been said to us, clearly we're not doing enough. We still, there's still people out there that we're not connecting to. And, uh, and we take every one of those calls and comments seriously. And hopefully no one uh, gets missed during this time of, of really an acute need for connectedness, not disconnectedness. Absolutely. And, and if I can add to that as well, just um, to let the community know that our mental health services, especially obviously our inpatient services are running um, to meet people's needs in terms of crisis supports and so on. Um, and in addition, our outpatient mental health support. So that's counseling and what we call case management. Um, those are very well up and running. We are um, experiencing some wait, increased wait times as we try to navigate through the uh, online offering or virtual offering of counseling and so on. Um, but please, for anybody that um, is struggling right now or could benefit from some increased mental health supports, we are here and we're here to listen and to offer support in the best capacity that we can. Um, so to access our outpatient mental health programs in terms of counseling or case management, um, you can call the hospital directly and ask to be connected. Um, we also have a direct line, if I can give that. Mm -hmm, please. Um, okay, so 519-371-8850. And you will speak with one of our secretaries and you can just let them know that you need some mental health support and, and we have counselors available. Um, in addition to that, to let you, the community know that the Canadian Mental Health Association is also still up and running. Again, with some change in their service capacity given COVID, um, but their number to reach them for mental health support is 519-371-3642. Um, and the last number I want to give is our mental health crisis line number of Graham Bruce. So that is a 24 hour, seven day a week support um, run by trained volunteers to provide 
mental health support, a listening ear, you can vent, you can call them for any purpose really just to have somebody to talk to and I always encourage that. Um, their phone number is 1-877-470-7800. So I just want to let people know you're not alone as much as you might feel isolated and disconnected right now. Um, those services, all of us, are just a phone call away and please don't hesitate to reach out. That's so important to share with people and I'm really pleased that you mentioned that. This is a challenging time for everyone and reaching out is important. I, I really like the phrasing distancing but not disconnecting. Um, it, it's really, really critical. That's another hashtag for you. <laughs> so just a couple of, of questions that I have. Um, we're doing things differently, virtual teleconferencing. And I mean, even this type of an interview, even for Rogers TV, it's a, a whole new world for us. What are you hearing back from those counselors who are doing the counseling and or the workers um, and the, the, the people who are taking advantage of that service and calling in? Are you hearing anything back about how it's working, how they're feeling about it? Um, I know on my end, I, I work in the counseling area of the hospital um, and I've been able to connect uh, with some people that I can provide support to whether it's on the telephone and we're working to um, to use the zoom platform to be able to provide video counseling um, and feedback that I've received um, just verbatim is that it's nice to have someone call it's nice to have someone to check in on um, to have that connection and know that there's people out there even though they might not be seeing them visually um, so I think it, it's been positive for a lot of our clients to know that while they can't come into our office doors right now, they can at least connect with us and that they're we're familiar with them and um, a listening ear right now. Yeah. The community of Francis could probably speak to that. Well, I think one thing that's happened I've heard uh, about the, the clientele from other staff is that in some ways uh, they've really stepped up to the plate in being that much more resourceful and calling upon family and friends um, just when you're stuck in a very difficult situation, it's amazing uh, how people, even the most vulnerable, uh, will will find some strength uh, to to try and take care of themselves. That being said, that's not to undervalue in any way the the, the outreach and the connection uh, that the the mental health services have had, but it just modifies the role in a way that hopefully it can work for the for the person we're serving and and acknowledge uh the strengths that they're showing i think that's that's helpful for all of us to hear uh when we're doing a good job or doing our best so so even a voice support in that way i think is a good thing we've been doing mm -hmm. You're really talking about our ability to be resilient, even in a challenging situation. Um, remarkable when you dig deep uh, that you can have resiliency you didn't realize you had. Right. So going back to the coffee house. <laughs> <laughs> We're telling you about everything but, aren't yeah. we? <laughs> no, no, it, it's all important and it's things okay. that I was hoping that you would share today. So this is this is great. Have you ever put it on social platforms before your coffee house? Have you ever done that? No, we haven't, not in terms of um, any live uh, feeds or however that goes, I'm not as familiar, but um, we've advertised through Facebook pages and, and Gavin Menzies, who's been uh, well connected to our coffee house in terms of support. Um, he's, he's quite technologically uh, masterful, so he's been able to spread the word that way, but no, we, we've never done Facebook Live or had it streamed in any capacity. Mm -hmm. So this may be an opportunity for the future to explore a new pioneer for sharing the message. Do you, do you think that you may also continue with the concept of, of Zooming and tele, teleconferencing or telephoning clients? Um, what I'm hearing a lot is, although COVID-19 is a great challenge, it's showing a different opportunity for pivoting and doing business differently. Healthcare is a business, I guess. <laughs> what do you think about 
what the future may hold for mental health and reaching out to our community. I, I think it, it certainly invites an opportunity for us to be thoughtful about how we're going about doing our work. So I think if anything, it's, it's added an option that we didn't really go to uh, as often as perhaps we once could. So, mm -hmm. so I think it's just, it's made the, uh, the effort uh, kind of eclectic, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, in our approach to our work. So that's always a good thing to, to use some variety and, and thoughtfulness about what's the best way to reach out to somebody. And I yes. think too, it's um, just thinking about our large geographical area that we serve mm -hmm. um, here at the hospital, all the sites and the community. So it, it does provide an additional opportunity to reach people where transportation is an issue or, um, you know, finances in terms of boarding gas and, and cars mm -hmm. and so on. So I think it, it increases our ability to reach out to people and really provide support to them where they're at and not having extra hurdles and barriers that uh, prevent people from accessing care. Mm -hmm. So what are you both doing to help yourselves through this? You, you're talking so much about how you're helping others. What are you doing to help yourselves? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, caregivers healthy too. <laughs> Yes, for sure. Um, I know myself, I, I practice uh, meditation, mindfulness, just to keep myself grounded in the moment um, and not worrying too much about the future or things that are beyond my control. Uh, physical exercise is important to me, a way to blow off steam. Um, so I like to go for runs often after work or work out before I come into work in the morning. Um, I think what's been really neat actually, and I've heard from other people, is again that increased connection. And so Zoom or Skype or whatever platform, I know myself, I've, I've reached out to people and friends and family members that I haven't talked to in a while that's, you know, now we have weekly sessions where we get online and you can, you know, play games on a lot of these platforms too and just laugh and joke around and enjoy the moment. So I think between those things, it, uh, yeah, it's helping me stay grounded and, and good. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll just pick one. I'll pick one item in particular. At the end of the day, uh, my wife and I have had the good fortune of being able to go out for a good long walk without a phone or being behind a screen or without headphones on or anything. And I think just that act of not only exercising but kind of just uh, enjoying the moment and taking Perfect. in. I mean, we have Perfect. literally Ray and Bruce. My goodness, what a beautiful place yeah. to be able to, to venture out to. I, I can't believe our time is up already. I want to thank both of you very much for joining me today. All the best in your coffee house adventure tomorrow. And please join us again to learn more about services and resources available to you and to your community in this COVID-19 emergency situation. Take care and take care of each other. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. I'm Sharon Skelly, host of Community Close-Up. Please watch us every week here on Rogers TV. Sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to an old friend. But when you're saying farewell to your vehicle, Kidney Car makes it fast and easy. Just